now in this session let us discuss about ideal transformer at loaded conditions okay so if you see black is going to be transformer at no load conditions if i close the switch if i close the switch here means how the operation is going to be we have to discuss and again let me repeat like you know this session is concise session so the moment it's concise session i'm not going to discuss much in detail okay what are the things which has to be remembered and how to solve the problems is our target now if you see for example v1 is a supply voltage injected voltage and because of that e1 is produced how e1 is produced because of no load current flowing through number of turns n1 and because of that black operating flux pi naught will be produced so if v1 is 100 volts automatically e1 will become 100 volts rms value automatically pi naught will be produced one thing i have to tell you for example in network theory i have a voltage source of 10 volts now for this 10 volts how much will be the current we don't know that all depends upon the connected system for example if connected system is 1 ohm how much will be the current 10 amperes if connected system for example is 10 ohms current will be of 1 ampere okay now actually ideally my voltage source can deliver any amount of current similarly here also v1 basically ideal voltage source ideal voltage source so ideal voltage source can deliver any amount of current that all depends upon the system we have to say now for example at no load conditions v1 is 100 volts e1 is 100 volts and uh, some flux lines are created the moment v1 is cannot be changed because it's an infinite source or ideal voltage source so v1 cannot be changed in the sense e1 also will not be changed if e1 is, will cannot be changed it means that operating flux also cannot be changed now for example if i close the switch what will happen basically in transformer there are two independent variables okay it means it is beyond transformer i can say because this particular load magnitude like you know impedance magnitude can be of any value if impedance magnitude is less current will be more if impedance magnitude is more current will be less okay so my i2 magnitude of i2 will be decided by the load here also magnitude of current flowing through the source will be decided by the load okay so we cannot uh, what do you say demand the load like you know i2 should be of this much amount only so magnitude of i2 is an independent variable in transformer and maybe this particular impedance can be of inductive dominated or capacitive dominated or only resist to so operating power factor can be it can be lagging or leading or unity power factor so very important thing here is there will be two independent variables in transformer that is going to be i2 is going to be independent variable and power factor theta 2 is going to be independent variable because these two has to be decided by the load okay we don't have any control now coming to here okay if i close my switch here already voltage is there and you are showing some path to flow of current by closing the switch so definitely some amount of current will go now we know that whenever you have current electrical current automatically associated magnetic field should be produced so because of i2 flowing through n2 some amount of flux will be produced that flux is going to be pi2 now what this particular pi2 will do pi2 plus pi naught so because of existence of pi2 means net flux it can be varied okay basically i can say this pi2 is trying to disturb the flux distribution of the core now for example let us think because of pi naught and pi2 if net flux vary if net flux vary induced voltage will vary because what is induced voltage induced voltage is directly proportional d pi by dt are equal to n1 d pi by dt okay so here if v1 should be infinite in the sense kind of constant you cannot change v1 means that e1 should not be changed means that net flux also should not be changed now before closing the switch net flux is pi naught only black only so after closing the switch if pi 2 come if pi 2 come if pi 2 is trying to disturb the net flux distribution okay so, so for example if this particular net flux distribution is varied varied in the sense what about e1 will vary depending upon the equation okay so e1 cannot be varied because connected source is going to be infinite source okay so v1 is infinite source so voltage cannot be changed so e1 should not be changed in the sense net flux distribution here should not be changed 
Now, the moment I2 come, because of that pi2 come, definitely my independent source, voltage source can deliver any amount of current. So my independent source, voltage source, will deliver some amount of current I2 dash, such that because of this I2 dash flowing through N1, will create pi2 dash, okay, such that this pi2 dash and pi2 will be compensated. Okay, now means even at loaded conditions also, loaded conditions also in ideal case of transformer, why I am saying ideal, uh, you will come to know very soon, means one gate question is also there, we will see at later point of time in practical transformer, but anyway, in ideal case of transformer, means pi2 will be compensated by pi2 dash, such that net flux will be pi naught only, so that's why ideal transformer we can say constant flux machine. Now, I can say that this pi2 should be compensated with pi2 dash. Okay, so who is creating pi2? Why pi2 is created? Because of I2 and N2 MMF. MMF only will produce flux. So pi2 is being created by N2 I2. And pi2 dash is created by I2 dash and N1. So that is going to be I2 dash N1. Okay, so this is going to be the equation we have to remember. We need not remember actually, like you know, secondary MMF should be compensated by primary compensating MMF. Okay, so secondary MMF is N2 I2 should be compensated by means N1 I2 dash. Okay, now coming to the point, as we discussed previously, okay, I2 and theta 2, two independent variables will be there, magnitude of I2 will be decided by the load, and load power factor also will be decided by the load only. Okay, so this particular current magnitude can be of any value and the angle between E2 and I2 can be of any value. Now, means of course there is a big confusion among students and maybe most of the faculties also. Like you know, in uh, one area like you know, V1, E1, okay, so this V1, E1 are directly connected, okay, so E1 is the induced voltage and V1 is the supply voltage. Now, V1 equal to E1 or not, yes, okay, so by applying KVL, V1 equal to E1, so I can write V1 equal to E1. Now, let us think of Lenz law, what Lenz law say, anything created should oppose cause of its creation, now, in the same dimensions, now, E1 is created, induced by N1 and operating flux pi naught. Okay, so basically Faraday's law if you see N1 d pi by dt is going to be induced voltage in case of primary. Okay, so E1 is induced voltage because of N1 and pi naught. N1 is anyway constant for an operating engineer. So because number of turns are going to be constant. So operating flux pi naught. So E1 is induced because of pi naught. Now can E1 oppose pi naught by Lenz law? No, it is in volts, it is in Weber's. And why pi naught is created because of I naught? Again, can E1 oppose I naught? No. Why I naught is created because of V1 we can say. So our induced one is voltage and the cause of its creation also is going to be voltage. Okay. So induced voltage should oppose cause of its creation. Yes. So in that case we can write V1 equal to minus E1 because E1 should oppose V1. Now in between these two many people, many people will, uh, will be confused. Okay, in drawing the phase diagram because this is the heart of transformer, like you know, while drawing the phase diagrams. Now I will clarify that. Okay, for example, at lagging conditions, at lagging conditions, this is going to be the phase diagram. This black already you know because we have drawn previously at no load conditions. Okay, so means pi naught, pi naught and i naught will be in line because it is ideal transformer. And induced voltage E1 and E2 is going to be means minus N d pi by dt already we derived in our previous sessions and minus E1 should be V1 we say. But logic here is not that. Okay. For example, why I have written this is called it means minus E1 equal to V1. Is it minus E1 or plus E1 should be clarified first. Now there are two ways we can analyze transformer. Okay, see here pi2 is compensated by pi2 dash, is it or not? Yes. Means like you know there are two ways in the sense, first way is pi2 is created and that pi2 is compensated by pi2 dash is one way of analysis. In the sense pi2 and pi2 dash should oppose each other. In another way of analysis is for example the switch is open. At no load condition how much is the flux? 
Why not? Now, if you switch is closed, pi 2 and pi 2 dash are compensated. Again, how much will be the operating flux? Pi naught only. Okay. So, there are two ways of analyzing transformer. Pi 2 is existing. For that pi 2, pi 2 dash came. They opposed each other. They fought each other. They both died. Fine. Second way is, even after loaded condition, operating net operating flux is same, is not changed. So, second way is we can say pi 2, pi 2 dash never existed, we can say. Okay, so means first way is pi 2 existed, pi 2 dash existed and pi 2, pi 2 dash opposed each other, compensated each other is the first way of analysis. For that way, phase diagram is dash. Okay, means why I have taken minus E1, minus E1 equal to V1, let me tell you. For example, let me think of me, E2 is here, E2 is in this direction. Okay, so if E2 is in this direction, with respect to E2, with respect to E2, I2 is lagging because that depends upon the load condition that is lagging power factor load, connected load. So with respect to E2, my I2 is lagging behind, lagging behind. So if I2 is lagging behind, for example, I2 N2, if I add I2 N2 MMF is going to be F2. Okay, that F2 will create pi 2. Now that pi 2 should be compensated by pi 2 dash is the way of approach. In the sense, if for example, if this is E2 and with respect to E2, I2 is lagging behind, lagging behind and this I2, this I2 is creating pi 2 and that pi 2 should be compensated by pi 2 dash, pi 2 dash. So in this way, we are going to see. Okay, so in this phasor diagram, what is the heart of this phasor diagram? I2, I2 dash are drawn opposite sides. Why? Because flux created by I2 and flux created by I2 dash are opposing each other. That is the first uh, way of understanding. Okay, second way I will tell you soon. Okay, so logic is very simple here. I2, I2 dash I have drawn in opposite direction. Why I have drawn in opposite direction? Because pi2 and pi2 dash are compensated is a way of approaching this. Now, for example, E2 to I2, Yang power factor angle is theta 2. First of all, I decided that I2, I2 dash should be in opposite direction because I decided that pi 2 and pi 2 dash should exactly compensate each other. So, if I2 is here, I2 dash is here. The angle between E2 and I2 is theta 2. The angle between E1 and I2 dash also should be theta 2. Okay, so I have taken minus E1, getting my point, right? So why I have taken minus E1 as E V1, we should not see this from mathematical orientation point of view, rather than that try to understand the heart. Okay, so pi 2, pi 2 dash oppose each other. In that way, I am trying to draw the phasor diagram. So if pi 2, pi 2 dash oppose each other, means that I2, I2 dash should oppose each other. Means that, means that I2, I2 dash should oppose each other, means that this particular E1, I am taking it to here, to minus E1, such that phase angle will be maintained. Okay. For example, in the second way of analysis, if you see, see here, N2, I2 equal to N1, I2 dash. Okay. So here, for example, what is N2 and N1? Constant. Number of tons in secondary and number of tons in primary, it's going to be constant. So the moment it is constant, Mathematically speaking, I2 and I2 dash should be in line, no? Yes. Okay. So, mathematically speaking, I2 and I2 dash should be in line, yes. Yes. Okay. Or I2 and I2 dash can be opposite to each other is also fine. Okay. So, there, as I, I told you, two ways. First way is pi2 and pi2 dash should compensate each other. Means that pi2 is created by I2, pi2 dash is created by I2 dash, these two should oppose each other. Okay, so if you draw like this, this particular my E1 should be minus E1 and that particular minus E1 should be considered as E1. Now, if you think of like, you know, pi 2, pi 2 dash never existed because at no load condition operating flux is pi naught. At loaded conditions also operating flux is pi naught only, pi naught only. So, means I need not bother about pi 2 and pi 2 dash. Yes, pi 2, pi 2 dash never existed. Yes, under that condition, I2 and I2 dash will be in line. So, for the same phasor diagram of lagging conditions, let me draw, let me draw, like, you know, this, by considering I2, I2 dash in line, okay. For example, with respect to E2, I2 is lagging behind. And I2 and I2 dash are in line with each other. And for that I2 dash, 
I naught is connected, like you know, aided because what is the total primary current here? I naught plus I two dash is the total primary current. So means I naught plus I two dash. I two dash and I two are in line. I two dash plus I naught is going to be I one. Okay. So in this in drawing this phase diagram, what is hot? Actually, pi two pi two dash never existed. If I see. Okay, if I see transformer like you know pi 2 pi 2 dash never existed under that conditions means i2 and i2 dash can be in line or if I say pi 2 and pi 2 dash should oppose each other compensated each other fought each other they both died means that pi 2 and pi 2 dash should be in opposite direction mean that i2 and i2 dash should be in opposite direction. Okay, now if you come to this at leading power factors. Okay, now I2, I2 dash I have drawn in opposite direction, opposite direction, opposite direction I have drawn means pi2, pi2 dash opposing each other is the concept. So minus E1 should be considered here such that if I see like you know E2 to I2 theta2, to E1 to I2 dash will be theta2. Okay, and in this also what is total primary current I2 dash plus I0 i naught is going to be i1 and the angle between v1 and i1 is going to be uh, what do you say power factor angle of primary now let me see here okay now okay in this case also leading but i2 and i2 dash are in line with each other i2 and i2 dash are in line with each other means that pi2 pi2 dash never existed at no load also uh, what do you say Operating flux is pi, yet load also operating flux is pi. Under that condition, see, I did not take minus E1 at all. I did not take minus E1 at all. Okay. So directly E1, E2, with respect to E1, I2 dash is leading, with respect to E2, I2 is leading. Okay. So I2 dash plus I naught, no load current is going to be I1. So the angle between what do you say E1 and I1 is theta 1, primary power factor. The angle between E2 and I2 is going to be secondary power factor theta 2. Now coming to the point like you know E2 is less E1 is more length of the phasor is more here means that E1 value is more E2 value is less. So E1 value is more E2 value is less. What does it mean? It is going to be step down transformer. So I have drawn phasor diagrams for step down transformer. Now in step down transformer already from no load conditions we know that EMF per turn in primary equal to EMF per turn in secondary. If EMF per turn in primary and secondary is same but total induced voltage in primary is more means that number of turns in primary should be more. So directly I can say N1 is greater than N2. Okay. So if N1 is greater than N2 coming to here let us calculate I2 dash. I2 dash equal to I2 into N2 by N1. Okay. So I2 dash equal to I2 into N2 by N1, N2 by N1, N2 is less, N1 is more, means that I2 dash value should be less, okay. Now that's why I2 length is more, I2 dash length is less, I2 length is more, I2 dash length is less, because primary is HV, secondary is LV. Okay. Anyway, this particular uh, what do you say ratios and all need not be remembered. Rather than that, do one thing from LV side to HV side. If you reflect, okay, LV side to HV. This is LV. Primary secondary is going to be LV and primary is going to be HV. Now LV side to HV side, voltage magnitude should be increased. And LV to HV. In this is I two to I two dash. Current magnitude should be reduced. Okay, of course we can discuss lot many things about uh, impedance matching, impedance matching, but uh, it's not required. Now, what is impedance equal to voltage divided by current? Okay, so from LV to HV, numerator is increasing, denominator is reducing. So impedance value should be increased by square times. Okay, so impedance value will be increased by square times. So if you know this, actually there is nothing to remember here. From low voltage side to high voltage side, voltage values will increase, current value should reduce and impedance value should be increased by square times. Similarly from HV to LV, high voltage side to low voltage side, voltage value will be reduced, current value will be increased and impedance value will be reduced by square times. So we are all set to start problems about ideal transformer at low rate conditions.